Hey everybody, Winstreak here. Welcome back to episode 6 of Mechanics Vault. Today we're going to be taking a look at turn-based battles. And here we go. Alright, we have our slime and our hero here, and they have stats down below. Those will keep track of their life, their attack, damage, and their speed. The speed directly affects the bar in which they attack. As they take damage, our hero charges up his bar and can use a special attack. And then as they go below zero life, they die and it ends. So it will be the basics of a turn-based game uh, with a little bit of interaction. Now before we jump into the code, there's one extra thing I want to spend some time on here. This is all about picking the correct time to stop events from happening. Otherwise, if two events happen at the same time, you get some weird graphics and chip breaks. So we'll talk about how we make sure this doesn't happen to your game. So looking at our code here, we have a bunch of globals that we will be grabbing later to store data. Start a layout, we are going to set the starting positions as one of our globals. That way, when we move our characters to attack the other one, we know where to send them back to. Every tick, we are going to set our hero stats as well as the slime stats down below. We don't actually change them in this video, but this sets us up uh, since those are variables and we could potentially throw a speed buff or something in there. This will set it up so that speed buff is going to update when the slime speed would change or when the hero speed would change. Additionally, we set their health bars to the correct percent each time and we also move the mask that shows how much of our special attack we have to the correct position every tick. And then if our mask moves far enough, it will pop up with the word click and it moves a glow effect, allows us to click on there. And as long as we don't have our attack scenes paused, it will use our skill for us. Every 0.3 seconds, we are going to flash that word click when we move that mask back up, which would be done by actually clicking on our special, we're just going to move the word click text as well as the glow off of the screen. And that makes it so we can no longer interact with it. Here we have every tick that we are not set to pause. If we are paused, we don't want anything happening. And this is key in order to make it so one, the enemy does not charge up while you're in your attack frame, and that helps us stop the collision of two people attacking at once, which breaks the game because once we are attacking, we turn off a lot of our settings and it allows us to interact in weird ways using physics and whatnot. So every tick that we aren't paused, we're going to be adding our speed base to our total attack amount. And once it gets high enough, we will attack. And that attack amount is 2,940. And we have this where if we both go at the same time, Instead of both going at the same time, we reset that slime down 40, so we're giving the hero the benefit of the doubt here, and we're removing just 40, which is a 30th of a second deduction on the slime. This will allow us to attack, and then the slime to attack right after us. And then we have two sets of code. One is for our hero, one's for the slime. If we're above that 2,940, we're going to set that pause to true, so we stop everything from happening. We're going to set our own attack bar to zero. We're going to set our move to enabled and we're gonna disable physics on both us and the slime so we can interact with each other. Then we're gonna set our animation to run because our character will be moving towards the enemy. Then we're going to move to a point of my choosing, which is image point one on the enemy. Then it's gonna wait for the signal back. Now that signal back is gonna come from this code. And essentially, if I'm touching the slime as well as my animation is playing run, then it's gonna turn move to off, create a text object. It's going to set that text object to the amount of damage that is dealt. It's also going to add the amount of damage that's dealt to the charge bar for our hero special. And it's gonna call the animation for damaged on the person who was hit. And it's last gonna subtract the amount of health that is equal to the attack. Then it'll wait 0.1 seconds, which is next to nothing, and it'll signal back and we come back up here with back and we just reset the hero's position back to the start so it's just going to instantly move them back to the start and we're going to enable all the stuff we turned off including resetting pause to false so everything starts happening again and last but not least we're just going to set our character back to idle instead of being in the run and the last part of this three part bit once the animation for damaged is finished 
it's going to set that character back to idle. And this same three part function is done in reverse for the enemy so they can hit us and the same things happen. And then we have a text damage on created call and this simply moves the text damage up 70 pixels from where it was created. And once it arrives at that 70 pixels, it destroys it. So that gives it that nice little float effect above the body. Here we have our call to let us use our special. This is saying if we click on the glow and system is not paused, so it will not let us cast our special ability when we're in a pause state, and that helps us not break the game. If both of those are happening, we set charge back to zero. We set our pause to true because we're starting to cast, and we set our animation to cast and our energy ball uncreated, which it has not been yet. When it's created, it'll wait for 0.4 seconds and then it'll move towards that slime target. When it arrives on move to, our hero stops his cast animation, goes back to just idling, pause is set to false, so everything continues again, and then our animation explodes and we see the damage just like we do with the normal attack, times 12 multiplier is just how much damage I wanted the explosion to do, and we subtract it from their health. Once it's done with the animation of explosion, we destroy it. Here we have our code for if the slime is equal to or beneath zero life. We set pause to true, so it stops everything and it just plays the animation for the slime's death. This is where we'd want to call code in order to pull in the next enemy we're fighting or go into the next part of the game. You would also do the same thing for your hero and have your death screen here. Our hero, when he triggers his cast, which was way up here, it's going to play through to animation frame four, and that's just because I built the reflections of light on my hero's cast animation into the actual code, and that's where I wanted the ball to actually start. Uh, once it gets to frame four and is playing cast, one time we are gonna summon this energy ball at the location of my choosing, which is on my character's hand there. Then it's going to trigger all this uncreated. And last but not least, once the animation finishes for the slime, it will destroy the slime character. Alrighty, hopefully that helps you out and lets you start your turn-based video game.